All right, we are live. Hey, hey, everyone! On a Saturday evening, um, I welcome you all. Uh, it's 2021, a new year, a new beginning. It's pretty exciting. So before we get started, uh, I just I just want to know if my audio is clear. Uh, can you guys give a thumbs up or uh, or in the chat or something, some indication so that I know that you know the. All right. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I welcome you all. On this uh, auspicious day, because it's the twelfth anniversary of uh, the first block of Bitcoin was mined twelve years ago in two thousand nine, January 9th. So on this day, we are uh, you know uh, celebrating the twelfth uh, uh, anniversary of Bitcoin, and it's pretty exciting. And so yeah, but before we get started, I just wanna uh, like uh, tell a brief about Airmate so that you guys know what the features are. So here is the live chat feature where you can just. Uh, chat and there's a question section so if you guys have any questions right so type it in the question section and we will take it up uh, after 20 minutes so the session will be 30 minutes with 20 minutes uh, interaction and then we'll have 10 session 10 minutes of Q&A so you can you guys can type your questions in the questions mm -hmm. column and we'll take it up and you there's also a raise hand option if you want to ask the question on in audio and video you, you can raise your hand uh, after the session is over all right so yeah, with that being said, I also want to thank our uh, community partners for making this happen. The number one blockchain India, the guys at Blockchain India, they've been doing uh, so many meetups all over India and uh, they, they're amazing. And secondly, Octaloop and uh, thirdly, the Blockchain School. So I'd like to thank them for making this happen. All right. So with that being said, let's start, let's kick this off. So of course, I have here with me the man, the myth, the legend himself, Satvik. Uh, he is a Bitcoin OG, and he was one of the first entrepreneurs in India to bring uh, Bitcoin to the masses back in 2013 when Unocoin was started. And uh, it's such a pleasure having you, Satvik. Welcome to the session. Thank you, Shekhar. Thank you. All right, perfect. So before we dive into Bitcoin and uh, the the likes of it, uh, why don't you give a brief about yourself and how did Unocoin come about? You know, the origin story of Unocoin. Okay, so uh, I think I did my MBA in 2018 from University of Melbourne. So after that, um, I actually started a partnership firm where I was offering custom scripting services in a virtual world called Second Life. It's like 3D environment. Once you log in, you see yourself as an avatar. Every avatar you meet, actually, there is a person behind it. So the services that I was giving there is, let's say if someone is constructing a home, I used to do the automation scripts for them. I mean, everything virtual again. So then if some someone is constructing a casino game, I made those games to work the way they wanted it, et cetera. So, yeah, so that took about like four, four years, had a bunch of employees who were working with me. Um, and the way we earn money in Second Life is through a closed loop currency called Linden Dollars. And for me to get that Linden Dollars back to India, I had to use PayPal, which was charging uh, like 3.9% as transaction fees and another 3% as conversion fees when they convert the remaining dollars into Indian rupees. So I was losing like 7% of the money uh, uh, month on month. And that quite started adding up. And in 2013 is when I started looking at, at least started in 2012 itself, looking at the alternatives, how to make these, try these kinds of transactions uh, faster and cost efficient. And that made me stumble upon Bitcoin. So at that time, almost there was no much activity in India at all. In, in early 2013, I identified one of the meetups happening in Bangalore. So when I went there, that's where I actually met uh, met Sunny, who is uh, who was the uh, was the organizer of that meetup. And he was organizing meetup to meet people so that he can get involved in the ecosystem and such. So 2013 is also one of the very good year for uh, the prices in Bitcoin, like how we are seeing in 2020 and 2021. So in the similar way, we have seen the price go up from $16 to $1,050. So that was like 100, uh, maybe 60x increase in a single year. So uh, the way the price increased, we have more and more people coming up for the meetup that was happening every weekend. And while we were discussing about a lot of things about Bitcoin, so people started showing interest, um, uh, but there was no place where people could lay the hands um, on top of some Bitcoins. So at that time, say the Bitcoin price varied in rupees, right? So from few thousands up to 40, 50,000 rupees. So that was a kind of range we were talking about. Um, so we saw that as a market opportunity because we didn't really want people to bring cash to the meetup and hoping that someone else who is coming for the meetup has mined some Bitcoin, uh, there can be an exchange between them. So 
uh, we kind of analyzed that's what that's the direction uh, it was going to and we took it as a it, we took it as a market opportunity and we started uh, unocoin mm-hmm. so initially it was uh, unocoin is just a simple buy and sell platform uh, nothing else almost nothing else and then we introduced merchant gateway features for both offline and online merchants to accept Bitcoin as a mode of payment. And then we did something called systematic buying plan that helped uh, Indians to average the cost of Bitcoins over a period of time by buying it frequent with the frequency of daily, monthly, or weekly. And then in 2018, we also launched Exchange. And apart from Bitcoin, uh, we also launched other coins like the, uh, it could be Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin, uh, Ripple, and maybe another 30 different coins. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, where we are. And I take pride in saying that uh, we were in the forefront to fight uh, the the battle at the at the Supreme Court uh, to make the uh, notice from Reserve Bank of India to banks uh, set aside so that uh, the ecosystem can get back to normalcy and uh, can continue to uh, move forward. So, so yeah, that's pretty much the story about me and my company. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, it's been yeah. so long. Uh, if you think about it, it's been a long journey. Yeah. Uh, it's been over seven years, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, over it's over eight years already. That's right. Wow, incredible. So, so as you know, like Bitcoin has evolved so so, so much uh, since this past seven, eight years. And it recently hit a market cap of 700 billion, uh, which is incredible. I think uh, 750 billion, I think, if I'm not wrong. So what are your thoughts on, you know, the evolution of Bitcoin and particularly in India, you know, uh, how do you think the ecosystem is different today? See, in, in terms of like 2013 and such, uh, only a small, you know, limited number of people um, used to even know about Bitcoin. And I can very clearly say that depending upon the increase in users, like when I have seen more increase in users on Unocoin, then that means like more and more people are getting to know. So, so that's how I would measure it. So in the first one year, uh, we saw maybe less than in actually first two years we had about ten thousand users or so in total that's pretty much it right so uh, it was uh, very slowly picking up um, after we entered the market then uh, after maybe a year or so zeppe uh, i mean created a wallet for international users and then they pivoted to uh, providing the same buy and sell like ours so we were the only two uh, you know platforms like that at least till 2016 or so and then we had another company called Coin Secure, uh, so which launched it as an exchange uh, for the users directly, right? So, so then the ecosystem has quite evolved. So then we had comparatively much uh, better uh, interface, a much better experience, and such things, uh, much more advanced features, um, and including the margin trading and uh, say derivatives. So all such things have uh, you know recently have um, evolved up. So, uh, but if I have to talk about the growth in numbers, the the biggest growth always happens when it is a bull run, right? So 2017, we had um, as much as 30,000 users waiting to get their profiles verified. And even now we have, I mean, some queue, but at least uh, because of some semi-semi automation things we have done, uh, we are just making sure at least within 24 hours, the people are getting um, their accounts verified so that, you know, they can get their, uh, they can get their hands on top of Bitcoin for the first time. Um, so, uh, and it, when it comes to the, the technology part of it, not many still understand uh, like how Bitcoin works. Most of the times they go with uh, some trusted person. Uh, whom they always have trusted when it comes to investments and uh, have, uh, have taken the leap of faith to dip their feet with one or two or up to 5% of the portfolio to get into this. Uh, I, I still continue to advise anyone that don't lose, I mean, don't, don't put way too much money, like 5% is already a risky number, right? So, and if you were to make money, you will make money anyway. So, uh, and it, it could just get locked up for multiple years and you may not have liquidity. I mean, when you really need it the most in your life. Right, so there are so many risks involved. So I've continued uh, talking about the risks, but when it when it comes to the normal person, uh, so the education about the risks is not significant, is what I think. Technical education definitely is there. So regulatory uh, risks also is not completely understood by people, um, and definitely the financial risks are not understood. So they only see and uh, you know get to that so that that's like a you know very risky thing to do i think uh, nowadays uh, and and when it comes to these kinds of bull runs right so media as well only make the positive hype 
um, about like what it was last week, what it is now. So that is like the exciting news that they create. But a lot of times they don't even say if there is some reason behind it, what it means, if there will be a correction, what if it goes bad. Uh, there are so many examples of such kind of drastic corrections where uh, the price of Bitcoin has fallen down by 80% in a single day in 2013 and up to 40% in the same single day in 2017. So this time what it will be, we don't know. So it, it's always be, you know, people really real need to be cautious and be aware. Um, and on the technology side of it, we see a lot of better projects coming out from India. At least until 2018, I did not really see many companies doing anything with blockchain space. But right now, there are more than a few dozens of companies who have tried doing something, have raised money as well, tried building the team. So yeah, that, that's def definitely a great thing for, for a country like India to be involved in blockchain technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, one of the things about Bitcoin is that it's a rabbit hole in itself, right? I mean, the more you dig in, the more you learn, and it's uh, it takes a while for people to understand it completely, right? So how would you, you know, for a person who's never heard of Bitcoin, let's say, or, or who's heard about it, but doesn't know about it, what exactly it is, or doesn't look looked into it, how would you describe it? Uh, you know, because a lot of, uh, because of this bull run recently, a lot of, you know, friends and family have been asking, you know, what is Bitcoin? Can you explain it? So what is the, according to you, what is the best way to explain what is Bitcoin? So giving an analogy is the best way to just say that how, how email made the communication of information from one person anywhere in the world to another person anywhere in the world faster and cheaper. Like uh, that, as compared to you know, good sending a, a a postcard uh, or writing a letter and such. So that's it. And the moment uh, anything comes online, it just reduces the cost. It reduces uh, the delay, right? So that's exactly what is happening when it comes to when it comes to Bitcoin. It is just making the transfer of money from one place to one place faster and cheaper. So that's like, uh, and if uh, if email technology have value and top of the post office technology then definitely bitcoin have the value value on top of the present monetary banking um, and financial systems that exist so that's how you know this is the simple words that's what uh, we can see and so like you say it's it's a rabbit hole in such a way that the easiest thing to understand in bitcoin which more or less you can completely understand end to end this technology if you can put efforts but all of its uh, you know side effects of how what it means in financial sector what it means in technical sector what it means emotionally what it means for regulatory landscape what it means for mining business so those things there is almost no limit of how much you can learn about it it's like you know never ending uh, never ending uh, rabbit hole but also people need to understand they need not understand everything it's okay to not uh, know completely about like how the entire ecosystem works before they get involved right so but if they decide that this is their future and they want to they want to do a career out of it maybe uh, there is more meaning in completely digging it else uh, no time is enough to really understand everything about uh, about bitcoin yeah yeah definitely um so Jumping to UnoCoin, um, so I, I'm interested to know what the user demographics of UnoCoin look like. You know, is it uh, investors class or is it even Gen Z or is it even like wh wh what is the user demographics of UnoCoin look like and how how has the recent you know Supreme Court uh, decision impacted the user growth at UnoCoin because it changed the narrative a lot in the country, right? So I'm curious to know about that more. Yeah, see, our demographic has always been uh, like 80% uh, male, right? So 85% of them are male. And a lot of times, uh, it will usually be the husband who operates this wife's account, um, like how they do in share trading and uh, sometimes buy something in the, like the wife's name, a land or something like that, right? So uh, they do it for uh, some tax management and effectiveness purposes sometimes. But but keeping that aside, yeah, it's usually like 85% of uh, of the people are uh, are male, and the age range ranges between uh, 20 to about 40. So which covers like 80% of our entire spectrum, right? And we we as well have uh, people uh, who are older than 80 years. Um, who are our customers but obviously that percentage is extremely less uh, right so and uh, from our understanding 
the the ability for our customers to understand our app and do transactions has been quite okay which means i have to consider they are quite uh, or at least medium educated could be at least puc or a degree like pre university or a degree at least is what it looks like and when it comes to the geographical uh, distinguishing uh, then uh, actually mumbai bangalore delhi pune and uh, uh and ahmedabad so these are the kind of things which usually comes first and then the second part comes for uh, hyderabad and chennai and such things so which in other words the well populated metropolitan cities usually rank much higher right so uh, so yeah so, so there's a kind of uh, uh, very understandable there is nothing like surprises that uh, i will see when i when i look at the demographics um and there is a good amount of uh, people who understand the technology at a greater level uh, to see what exactly is 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 happening behind the scenes and what what do they mean by when they are buying what do they mean by when they are selling and doing the transactions and how to do, how to make sure the transactions is happening on blockchain so so all those things is kind of uh, either uh, people read and understand themselves or ask someone from a friend and understand what it means the transaction is complete and such so those are the questions that won't really come up to us for a customer care or something like that so which means um they are i mean our apps are also available both in english and hindi so which has helped a lot of people who don't know english to uh, become quite uh, you know familiar and friendlier with uh, the buttons they are pressing and uh, messages that we are providing to them so uh, in in that way it hasn't uh, you know really been uh, been challenging and when it comes to 2018 verdict so uh, i mean 2020 verdict the case from 2018 so it's, it's interesting to actually see that um whatever was the status quo before 2018 is the status quo that we have now so there was a uh, notice in between uh, which which talked about the banks should not support the cryptocurrency exchanges and its customers but when that was taken away right so then the status quo whatever used to be there is what it is right now but uh, what this means for a common man is that uh, crb is quite aware of what is cryptocurrencies and uh, uh, supreme court is now completely aware of what is cryptocurrency so these are the things which has already come to their notice and have uh, have eventually fallen into the positive light of things that does not mean it can be positive forever or what exactly it will be in the future but it is at least not something that uh, someone can say oh i got to know you are doing in bitcoin it is illegal so at least those kinds of things we definitely will be avoiding uh so but eventually uh yeah the 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 regulations uh, in a few years or some kind of taxation guidelines categorization guidelines um definitely will be of of, of some help uh, for for indians uh, it's 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 a kind of uh, we will see it down the road i mean india usually have the uh, habit of seeing uh the i mean how a regulation in a developed countries help put them they will not see it like 3 months then replicate it here they see it for extended period of time more than a few years sometimes to even know like what it means for those kinds of countries what are the new new difficulties they faced see for example in japan they declare it as legal tender but even today a lot of people still don't touch bitcoin right so because uh, they are they're still afraid so when those kinds of things are happening obviously Uh, the developing countries will be more uh, more uh, risk averse to do to do any kind of regulation which uh, may not go with the the law of the land and the the emotions and um, and the way people do transactions so so those things you know really matter so it's just about waiting for the right time for for things to fall in place is what i think yeah absolutely that's a great point and in a country like india where there are billions of people you know you can't uh... you can't expect to move uh, things to move really quick uh, it does take a lot of time uh, to things for catch up but one of the things about i i i call them to our people I mean, people with uh, with lot of sorry <laughs> yeah. uh no i i just uh, consider in when it comes to indians right so they are they are very very uh, kind of you know the way they think they always try to see how they can take advantage of a regulation or how they can take advantage of a technology for their benefit yeah. so uh, that is where it becomes tricky right so uh, when they make the regulation it really has to be you know full proof or they have to move towards moving I mean, making that full proof it, it cannot be like even a guideline guidelines don't even work most of times in india it has to be a strict uh, in the rules and regulations yeah 
yeah, yeah right. absolutely and one of the inter- another interesting things about india is like uh, things do take time especially in technology for uh, things to get adopted right but once things actually catch up right it's like a tsunami i mean the same thing if you look at it in whether it's be upi whether it be the internet usage social media any of the any of the technological trends right it did take quite a while for th- things to take off in india but when it did it it's unstoppable so and that's one of the things about bitcoin is that it's still you know kind of nascent in yeah. india right and do you think that that kind of a tsunami is uh, is going to happen in the near future like how how, how do you think like currently i think the estimates say that there are about 5 million crypto users in india so how big do you think this could get and how bullish are you see 5 million is like uh, less than 0.5% of the population today uh, even the, the population which are over 18 years who can actually do transactions right um and lot of times uh, i mean at least a country like india which is highly regulated country because yeah i mean that's how that the country is, is is kind of evolved over a period of time um there will always be a huge set of people who will stay on the other side of the fence uh irrespective of whatever happens because let's say if a, if a common man who want to invest 10000 rupees and that is the, their savings in one year so which is like most of the I mean, lot of times that will be the kind of uh, you know common man we see with with majority of the people in that falling in that particular sector uh to what extent can they take the leap of faith that if tomorrow bank issue happens and this money again get struck they will not be able to liquidate or this kind of uh, transaction can can lead them to you know some kind of uh, legal trouble in the future so they definitely don't get into that right so the only ones who are uh, into this is kind of who comparatively have taken the risks and completely understand what this means if not in short term this is something that will get better in the long term when it comes to, when it comes to a country like india so those I mean, understanding those things is definitely um important for a man and uh, 95% of the people stay on the other side of the fence so the, the highest percentage we may ever be able to meet um could be like 3 or 4% of the indian population without the regulation but with the regulation probably we are talking about uh, say reachability of up to 20% of the population so without the regulations we it's definitely a uh, we will have the cap in number of people who can get involved in this yeah yeah absolutely that's a great point um so uh, recently you know coin uh, you know closed the funding round by investors including tim draper which is a big deal uh, first of all congratulations on that and that you know goes to show that of course if you in foreign investors you in big investors are really bullish on india so uh, could you tell more about that see our association with uh, tim is not like a new one right so our company it it was uh, a part of boost.vc which is like an incubator from and then we were in tribe 4 or so so which was a 2016 batch um, so uh, so there actually it was it is run by adam draper who is the son of uh, of tim draper then tim himself i mean through his uh, vc fund He is a limited partners for Bloom Ventures, uh, which were who were our uh, lead investors in 2016 raise that we did, right? And this time we got him directly involved. Is how I see, and they have seen the movie for more than like at least five years uh, of how how Unocoin has been performing and the dedication that people are, I mean, the founders and the employees are putting, and also India is such a huge market and. it is usually worth taking the risk small amount of risk for the investors and when it comes to a country like uh, like india uh, not only indian investors but international investors as well understand the regulatory risk that is uh, that continues to be here so for a company like uh, uno coin or any other company you can think of in india if they were serving in some developed countries market probably they might have got the valuation of 10 times of what they are and they could raise 10 times more money and grow like 10 times faster right so uh, in india everything is slow till the regulations are there and everyone understands it and and people the founders uh, have put the i mean have, have acknowledged this and are putting their efforts to slowly grow the company so so that's how i see this and it's it's uh, obviously uh, the size of india and the population uh, is not negligible for anyone it is like 1/7th mm-hmm. of the world right so that is that is a risk yeah i think uh, 
Sadhvik, uh, I think uh, uh, there's some network issues. We're not able to hear you currently. Um, okay, uh, are you guys able to hear Sadhvik? Uh, because it's showing lost connection to me. Um, hold on. Oh yeah. Okay. I think we've lost uh, Sadhvik. Uh, all right. Um, so let me uh, let me get in touch with Satvik and see if uh, what issues are there. I'll be back in two minutes. All right. I apologize for the. Same link, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, th I think I'm back on on, on right. the line. Okay, thank you. All right, Satvik is back. Um, there was a small uh, network issue. Oh, sorry. Oh, hey, Satvik, are you able to hear me? Yeah. All right, all right. Perfect. We can hear you. All right. So my last, yeah. I was just coming to my last question. Yeah. Um, yes. All right. All right, perfect. So yeah, I was just coming to my last question, which is a uh, kind of a juicy question. Uh, the price prediction, as we all know, uh, you know, Bitcoin hit more than $40,000 uh, recently. And you know, it's, it's really mind blowing. So what is your uh, price prediction uh, in the short term and long term? Hello, Satvik. I think. Uh, uh, Mobile yeah, things so much of uh, so from go and uh, so uh, really draw the line where like consume of the money in the world period of time or it will down to zero. I think it's breaking off in the middle a bit. Uh, is it my, is it... Yeah, Sadhvik. Uh... I think if you just keep your audio on, I think it should be fine because uh, the bandwidth might reduce because of that. Uh, are you able to hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's clear now. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Go ahead, please. Okay, I think unfortunately there's network issues again. Um, yeah. Uh, 
I think we can hear you now, Satish. We just, just, we'll just try for one last time. Um, so yeah, you, you can go ahead. Uh, your audio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so when it comes to price predictions, right? So uh, see, I mean, I have seen the prices go up from sixteen dollars up to like forty thousand, right? So that is like range that have that have really seen. And in the process, I have learned a lot about not only on the technology of how the Bitcoin works and such, uh, but um, but definitely also about what it means for various other industries, including the regulators to the central banks to the, to maybe the different people uh, like exchanges, different business like exchanges, then on then for miners and what it means for a common man. So there is like so many different things we will eventually learn, and I don't think. We, we kind of have understood everything yet as well so it's kind of a evolving space okay so either the the price will continue to keep on uh, increasing because of its limited uh, numbers in nature and lot of the a lot of the uh, institutions now are considering that to be a part of the balance sheet so which is like very interesting so and on the other side more and more people have uh, have considered holding bitcoin as a long term asset than short term asset or speculative asset so all these things uh, is what it looks like the present bull run is because of but but there will definitely be a price at which we will see a no dive and there will be some corrections there could be I mean, some kind of uh, um, time which uh, like cold time so where this not much of action is happening and there could be one another bull run when uh, when when everything looks uh, bad as compared to bitcoin then again the bitcoin will have bull run uh, so right now we have definitely seen it could be commodities equities real estate a lot of uh, i mean on one one side we see a lot of inflation and on the other side it is more uh, it's becoming more and more illiquid illiquidifiable because you cannot really like if it is real estate and such things you cannot really sell it quickly when you really need liquidity in your life so those things have made uh, you know people to strongly consider that bitcoin as a as a uh, better investment uh, investment or savings alternative um, so I hope uh, there is more and more Bitcoin that continues to be in the market to swap from one hand to another. Uh, the less it is, uh, it will just keep bumping up the price. So that's what it looks like. And if the entire thesis of why the Bitcoin exists fails, then it, it price could even just go down to zero. But I continue to see that that is an unlikely thing to happen. Um, and on the other side, one thing we can think of is what if there is a better technology than Bitcoin that will come I mean, come to the world, right? So uh, then again, what plays out is the network effect. So even if there is a better platform than Facebook, the Facebook will not just lose its value because the value of Facebook is because of uh, 1 billion active users every day, right? So uh, with that kind of network effect, it is definitely not uh, easy for a, a, a new cryptocurrency or a new technology to take away the, the huge population who have strongly believed in this uh, more than a decade of belief is already put into this. So I think over a period, in, in, in the long term, it's definitely a bullish market, no matter how I see it. Deepthi Sathvik or Deepthi Sathvik? I think that's a, they made some really great points, Sathvik. I think, yeah, we've come to the end of the session and it's time for now to take some questions from the audience. There are some really yeah. interesting questions. Yeah. All right, the first question is for a beginner, uh, a newbie who is into crypto, should they necessarily have to go to international exchanges like Binance or uh, should they first, you know, go to Indian exchanges like Unocoin? See, I think uh, I think for, for, for people in India to get involved, again, depends upon how much money they want to invest and such things. So if it is uh, not more than a few thousands of dollars, it's always good to stay with uh, the, the Indian exchanges and uh, do the required transfer. But when it comes to you know really big uh, amount of money, then it may make comparatively sense where they want international liquidity also be uh, a part so that they get better rates and such things. So, I mean, what we have seen, at least the when it comes to customer base of Unocoin, uh, people come to us uh, when it is their first transaction, right? And when they want to just buy their Bitcoin for the first time and they want to they exit from Bitcoin and such things, right? Uh, but then people have used Bitcoins to trade in other websites as well, other exchanges as well. And uh, I mean, some make money, some lose money. They, uh, it's it's just like uh, the, the speculative game uh, gets played there from, from the investors. 
um but when it i mean i always recommend indian exchanges but obviously there is no such uh, rules that restricts people from going to international exchanges there are some advantages for sure i i do not deny by going to international exchanges where they can do margin trading leverage trading and then there is some uh, futures and options like like some and the the more riskier thing they they try to do you know there is more obviously risk of ruining their entire capital right so but, but in indian exchanges i have seen that to be more sober so i have not seen an indian exchange giving 125x uh, margins and such thing so yeah. at least in that way it's better <laughs> yeah, yeah 125x sounds uh, crazy but anyway so the next question is uh, because of high volatility that of bitcoin it's being traded more like an investment instrument than a currency do you think there'll be ever a time where uh, its price will stabilize see stable will definitely see it will not stabilize in such a way that it will become like a stable coin right but it will uh, stabilize for uh, like how we have indian rupee to dollars okay so there will be some variation for sure if you see over months or over years but there will definitely be some kind of uh, realistic value that gets established and it becomes and why i mean when it will happen is it continues to you know reach more and more people's hands uh, and uh, the wider customer base means uh, there is always uh, the liquidity on both sides for uh, for both the buy and sell side and uh, people have more realistic targets of what they want to achieve even if they are seeing this as a investment opportunity but if i have to compare uh, it to say how things used to be in 2013 we have seen the days where uh, there is a 60% drop in a single day right we definitely don't see such a huge percentage drop right so today maybe we see about 15 or 20% maximum and maybe in another 5 years it might come up to 5% and in another 5 years it could come up to plus or minus 2% so which will i mean if it if it works in the, if it goes in that direction probably we are seeing uh, more stabilized prices maybe in about 10 or 15 years is what it looks like and it will be more uh, useful as a uh, as a currency uh, uh, i mean in india how it treated i don't know but internationally at least in, in, as, as per the technology the, the way it is built right so people will become comparatively uh, comfortable in doing the purchases as well using the using the bitcoin but we will again the bigger questions comes up to be what it means for the mining fees um, is it still worth it what will be the price of bitcoin at that point of time uh, if mining fees itself is like 20 30000 rupees to just get one transaction mined you know it's it, it could be as crazy as that we probably will start seeing the layer 2 uh, layer 2 projects um, which which sits on top of the of the bitcoin blockchain and make those transactions cheaper and faster yeah uh, that's a good point I think we have time for two more questions, Max. Uh, so first one is, how do you think CBDCs affect cryptocurrencies? Uh, for those of you who don't know, CBDC is a central ma- central bank digital currency, which is basically a digital currency that's backed by a, a government. See, uh, by doing the currency in the form of CBDC, is only changing the technology behind how it works but at the end it still means the exact same thing for a common man right so if if you say that for nft uh, transactions now we are using mysql database but then we'll start using oracle database i mean it doesn't make much sense to me right so at the end of the day does the exact 100% same regulations and restrictions cash only restrictions will be available on um, i mean for the cbdc based coins in a country like india uh it could just mean the transactions are faster but today it's like really fast i could use imps instantaneously right and it is already free and what is that uh, advantage that cbdc will bring to a country like india which already have a very strong financial infrastructure provided by government so i i can i mean i don't i don't really i mean i cannot really think of to what extent it can bring the benefits to the table uh except that uh, you know it is just one, one another new thing from the government and using new technology like blockchain that's it yeah i cannot see huge difference for a country like india yeah absolutely so last question uh, what are some of the new features that uno coin is planning to bring about in uh, 2021 see uh, th- this is obviously a year where we will continue to focus on uh, uh, more customer acquisitions and uh, and introducing maybe a few more uh, 
few more interesting coins uh, or the, the tokens for our customers to trade and such things uh, but uh, it is just about continuing to grow like see when it comes to the to the to our, our normal trading platform where people can simply buy and sell the bitcoin and we become their counterparty without uh, you know making our customers to bother about uh, bid and ask orders limit prices depth chart so those becomes like compl- com- comparatively complicated right so uh, but we are definitely bringing in the more utility bill payments uh, that people could pay using bitcoin so that includes the electricity bills and some of the well known apartments even accepting the rent through bitcoin so we are tying up with them as well so those are the things you know that that will be somewhat exciting for the people and as of now people can all, all already pay their prepaid uh, i mean top of their prepaid uh, sim card uh, pay their uh, postpaid mobile phone bill then recharge their dth connections and such things already exist uh, so one, now we are also in talks to see if we can include uh, payments of insurance um, as well uh, th- through bitcoin etc and obviously one another uh, long term dream that we continue to have is providing a prepaid debit card for our customers where uh, they can shop using the balances in uh, in their bitcoin account uh, at tuna coin on the exchange front uh, i think uh, very obviously we would be moving on towards uh, towards the margin trading probably is what it looks like to me right and we also have two new features i don't i'm not sure how many of i mean we haven't really publicized that yet we just have it launched uh, a couple of months ago is where uh the users can use their bitcoin to uh, collateralize it and take the money to their bank account as a loan and then pay back uh, a nominal in- interest and uh, the the principal to get their bitcoin uh, you know collateral removed right so that they can get their bitcoin back so uh, and if people are strongly believing that the bitcoin will continue to go up but they still want some liquidity in their life so they definitely can use this feature uh, to 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 get a loan against bitcoin and on the other side people can also use their usdt balances uh, to do a fixed deposit kind of thing and there is some interest that is paid by us uh, i mean we actually work like uh, like how the bank works so on one side we pay the interest to some customers and on the other side we lend it to another uh, another customer but we obviously hold the collateral of bitcoin which is at least uh, uh, less than 50% uh, Fifty percent exposure, which means today, if someone is collateralizing one Bitcoin, they probably will only get fifteen lakhs of loan, but not thirty lakhs. So, which means even if the price goes up to half of what it is, it is still completely secure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just just about uh, continue growing the company is, is 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 how I see this, and this is this will definitely be a much exciting year than two thousand twenty, is what I continue to see. So, yeah, oh, awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So with that being said, we have come to the end of our session. Um, sure. Sadhvik, thank you so much for taking the time uh, for this. It was a really good session. Um, sure. All right. Nice awesome. to meet you guys. Thank you for organizing this. Thank you. Awesome. So guys, we'll be back in uh, shortly with the next speaker. So hold your horses. All right. See you guys. Thank you.